stands, uh, stands to, to stay, to stay on the, what is under, under the nine accidents. Quantity, quality, relation, action, passion, uh, uh, position, place, time, and possession. So the ten categories are in the substance. Huh? And the substance, to understand that thing about heart. Huh? So, because the, the, the way you know what are the substance, an accident, you have to refer to yourself. <laughs> it's the best way. Because we know from our own experience. And the first experience of what is a substance, I think, is in your own eye. Huh? When you say, I am tired, I am joyful, I have a good time, it is the substance. What is permanent in you? Huh? At my first communion, huh? at my profession, at my marriage, at my death, you can just say that. Only after. <laughs> okay. Because in eternity we continue to be I. Huh? We are not melted in the in the general universal soul. No. Each one continues to be a substance. Huh? Substance. Okay? So substance, we can distinguish two levels uh, of the category substance. The first level it is the individual and primary Substance, that means the existing in the reality. Huh? The thing existing, the being, or if you want, the individual substance. Huh? For example, you, I. Huh? Because you is not a substance, strictly speaking. The substance is I. <laughs> when I say you, in fact, I say your substance, huh? your I. When I say he, I say is I. Because in the reality exists only I. All the death is related to other. Huh? Okay? So we use many pronouns, but in fact it would be all the time to design huh, to uh, uh, individual uh, su su uh, subsistent being. And that is um, it is the first level, huh? the first level. It is the level of uh, first level of knowledge. It is the level also of uh, metaphysics, huh? because metaphysics is interested with being, huh? with existence. Okay. But I know I am I. <laughs> I know about my uh, qualities, my quantity. So when I know that, I am on the second level of meaning of substance and accident. So we have to distinguish two levels. The level close to reality, when I see a cat, huh, I, see, uh, I, I see an animal, I see a, a, some, someone, huh, some substance. I don't, I don't see the substance. We cannot see the substance. But I know my cat as a substance because I see uh, my cat through his activity, huh, through, through his qualities, through his quantity, through his action. When I see my cat running after a mouse, <laughs> it is his substance which is writing. Of course, we don't say that, but we are in philosophy, not to go deeper. <laughs> uh, so that is the first level. Now, I know that my cat, uh, if something is under his accident. So that is the second level. Huh? The second level, it is the universal secondary uh, substance. Huh? Or if you want, it is the concept. Huh? The concept of the thing, uh, the second level of knowledge. Or, if you want, another way, the first intention, the second intention. You are familiar with that now. Huh? Uh, the first level, it is what I see, I know first. I know that is a cat, that is a dog, that is a rose, that is an apple, an apple that is a uh, kiwi. Okay. Now, if I see this kiwi is green, I am on the second level when I say the kiwi is the subject and green is the predicate. Okay? So it's the same. Huh? When we are in logic, we are on the second level. And metaphysics, we are on the first level. Metaphysics, what interests us, it is being. The second level, it is what I can do with that being. How I can apply that being to the subject. Huh? That is the second level. It is the level of logic. In the level we call also 
I says that other uh, categories. But categories, you know, the problem is we can study categories, we can study pretty common at two levels, the level of metaphysics. And when you study with Dr. Duncan, uh, metaphysics, I'm sure you will study categories, the division of being. But now we study the division of being not in relation with existence, but in relation with our knowledge. Huh? I can know that there is being. You know? For example, you know your high by direct existence. Huh? But you can reflect, you can say, I am a high. Mm -hmm. I am a substance. That is the level, second level, huh? the level of logic. Huh? And that predicate, those predicates uh, in logic uh, are applicable to a subject, are applicable to a subject, uh, substance, subject. Or if you want, they are predicable or predicate, predicated. Uh, they are attributed to a subject. So here we are on the level of uh, logic, the level of second intention, the second level of knowledge. Okay? Um, for example, here, so the first level, I will say, this man is an animal. So that is, that man exists as an animal. Now I can say, this man is an animal, so how animal, what is animal in regard of man? Huh? What is the accident on the substance? That is the second level. In fact, both are almost similar. But one is the level of knowledge here, the other is the level of existence. But the level of knowledge must reflect the level of reality. So it's the reason why when you study critical mental category in logic, and we go back after that in metaphysics, we see what is the difference? The difference is the point of view. Huh? The point of view here is existence being, the point of view here applicability, criticability, how the concept is applied to the subject. Huh? If that concept is applied to the subject in an accidental way, hmm? I can reflect on that. Okay? But I will not insist on that too much. I go to page eight, so the universal secondary concept. Huh? Um, can a uh, uh, universal or secondary uh, concept, in, in fact, it, uh, secondary uh, substance, the secondary, the primary substance is the existing. The primary, uh, the primary substance, it is existing. The secondary substance is what is in my mind. Huh? That is the reality that is in my mind. And because it is in my mind, I can apply the, the pretty case to many things. When it is the existence, it's not exactly the same. For example, I can say, John is a man. But this man, I, but I cannot say this man is John. Or man is John. Man is, man is not John. Man is also Paul. Man is, is Louis. You know? But in, in, uh, in the secondary, the level of con concept, what is a concept? Huh? It is the intelligible express species. And that is abstract and universal. So as a concept, I can apply all the critical, the critical man to every being and every mode of being. Huh? Can apply. I can use them as attribute, as critique. Huh? That is the level of logic, the yeah? level of logic. Okay. Then, no, uh, uh, the individual accident cannot be predicated. For example, my look uh, is a name of a dog of ten ten. Uh, is white and black, but not this white and this black on the f on Fido black or back on Fido milk. You know? That means I I cannot uh, I can say John is a good golfer. I cannot say golfer a good golfer is John. Because a good golfer can be another one, can be you, <laughs> you know? Okay, but well, we will come back on that. The square, the rectangle, very important. So the substance is called second when precision is made from individual existence. 
That's the first level of knowledge, huh? existence, being, existence. And substance is taken a category, a universal at the second level. So when I, abst I, I reflect on that capacity uh, to apply qualities to a being, huh? and I universalize that, I am on the second level. For example, I have a, a, a shirt, huh? a coat, a cassock, etc. That is possession. Now, I arrive at the, at the level, I, abst I don't stay at the level of skirt, of shirt, of, uh, of uh, cassock. I go to the, another a co universal concept, possession, habit. You know? That is something uh, uh, universal. That is the second level. Is that this cassock? Is not this habit? It is any habit can be possessed by a, man, a human being. Huh? The color black can be in my dog, can be in my cat, can be in my shirt, can be uh, uh, many things, you know. Okay. So we have to make a difference between a complete substance that is important for the future and an incomplete substance. A complete substance exists per se. Be careful, huh? exists in itself. The, category, the ca characteristic of substance, substance is to exist in itself. Or, we saw the last class, we saw that last class, in its own right, huh? in its own right, or per se. Well, forget per se, and keep in mind in itself, okay? In itself. That is the characteristic of substance. I exist in myself. <laughs> but my air, my qualities, my action, my passion, my relation exists in my I. Exists in my substance, you know. So uh, that uh, I am a complete substance uh, when I have a real subject. For example, here, uh, Fido, my dog, uh, or John, or I, that is a complete substance. But my complete substance, that is another problem, is made with two incomplete substances. <laughs> uh, I am made with matter and form. Huh? Every material thing is made with matter and form. Hmm? And for us, for men, what is matter for men? What is matter? The body. And what is the form? The soul. But the body is a substance but incomplete. My body alone is not, no, is not I. Anyway, it is my 11 eye, <laughs> 11 body, <laughs> every seven year, huh? okay? So that is incom incomplete substance. My soul on this earth, not in heaven, but in earth, is incomplete substance. That means my soul cannot exist in a human being without a body. And the body cannot exist without a soul. So we say soul and body, both of them are incomplete substance. But my eye is a complete substance. It's the same for my dog. My dog is made with body uh, and soul. My, my dog has a principle of life. Huh? It is living. Mm. Of course, it's, of course it's, it's not immortal, but it is. Huh? So the form of my dog or the mother of my dog are incomplete substance, but they are together. They make a complete substance. It is my dog. In Cameroon, no Shepherd. That was my dog. I know it was a real, I told that to you, huh? a real seminarian dog. <laughs> it was black and with a Roman color. Yes. <laughs> it's funny. And I, I thought about that. When I was with him, I never thought about that. Now I think, yes, he was a prophetic dog, you know. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, I, I, I have some picture of it, but you know, somewhere in my archives. Okay, uh, I continue. Um, <laughs> the exception is for men, huh? because men having a spiritual soul, and that we have to prove that in philosophy of man, huh? uh, have a con a, a, after that, after that will be a complete substance. But that is interesting for Christian. My soul after that continue to be the form, a form. Or a form is calling for a 
body. So that the theory of Aristotle fits very well with the dogma of resurrection. But Plato, his philosophy cannot admit fit at all because the body for him is a cave, is a prison, is a jail, is an obstacle to the truth, to the light, to the happiness. So once you remember St. Paul, huh? when he went to the Arab page and when he, he preached, I have a good news for you. Oh, yes, I saw you have a great devotion to the unknown, unknown God. Oh, yes. And he said, oh, you know, I have a good news about that unknown God. I know him. Oh, yes, you know him. Oh, yes. I know. So he said, you know, he came on a, mm, on a, mm, a, a God incarnate. Mm, but yeah, continue, continue. But he said he died. Ah, happily he died. But now he said, I have better news to give to you. He resurrected. Ho, ho, ho. Come another day. Huh? <laughs> Why? Because in their philosophy, <laughs> huh, the soul is a complete substance. And the body is the cave, huh? the prison, the chain. So it's difficult for Platonicians to believe in the resurrection. You know? But if you are Aristotelian and you say the soul is the form of the body, after that, your soul continues to be a form and it is, not, it is not a proof of the resurrection. We cannot prove that. No? But it is a, 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 a foundation, possibility to receive a new the body. Okay, that is a parenthesis. To see to you, to show you that philosophy has implication in theology. <laughs> you know, both are clear. Okay. Um, so, substance is independent in its existence, and don't show us the, the substance, my eye, is independent of what? Independent of my accident. Huh? Of course, I must have a quantity, but my quantity can change. I have qualities, otherwise nobody will see me. I have at least color. <laughs> huh? But they can change, and the eye continue to be the same. So I can see my eye is independent in its existence in the regard of the of the age, you know. Uh, and that, what is that? We saw that just before. You remember a, a few a few days ago, we saw what is that? We speak about what is that, and we say whatness or quid. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Or definition, no? And after you said that, I say, if I consider the whatness, the quidity, or the definition in relation with existence, how we call that? Essence. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Be familiar with that, huh? essence. And if not, I consider essence as principle of activities, huh? activities, I call that nature. And here, Hey, substance is also source of activity. Ah, that means nature goes with substance. What is the substance of the eye? Is my nature. And my nature, I am a human being. So I must act. So the nature is the essence as principle of activity. But the substance is, so in fact, all that design the same reality, but seen a different point of view. Okay? Rational animal, rational animal, rational animal, rational animal. But seen a different aspect. Like a doctor with cement a different aspect, a dentist another aspect, huh? a psychologist another aspect, and artist another aspect. But here we have the same reality, a rational animal, but sees in, in logic, in metaphysics, a little bit of metaphysics I give you this morning. But go tell that to your confrère. The <coughs> humble. <laughs> now, the accident. My, so the substance, my eye, is sustaining, supporting, carrying huh, my accident. And what is the accident I cannot get rid of? I cannot get rid of that on earth, my quantity, huh? quantity. So we saw there is two intrinsic, huh? quantity and quality. 
I cannot have a material being without that. A material being necessarily implies quantity, and a material being implies quality, at, at least to be seen by senses. Okay? So let us go to quantity. It is the accident of material thing whereby the things are three, and I will add a fourth one. First, extended in space. Huh? We occupy a volume, a volume. Secondly, a volume. Huh? Secondly, capable of measure, measurable, measure. Uh, two, three feet, uh, 30 meters, etc. Huh? Thirdly, matter is capable of division. We can divide, huh? division. And finally, I will add a fourth one, it is not here, but fourth one, impenetrability. What is the meaning of that? Well, I take here two brushes. Let us say they are almost identical. The same volume, huh? the same qualities. Can be one, only one. Matter is incompenetrable. Matter expands, excludes other matter. But you see, Father, if I take one liter of gas and I put that in a continent, one liter, I put another one liter, I have only one liter of gas. It's true. But the pressure is double. <laughs> Why? Because you have two twice the number of a neutron and electron and atom, you know? So the pressure is double, you know? In your tire, you have pressure, you put our, you can push, 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 enter A, the volume is the same, but the pressure is growing. Huh? So, impenetrability. Uh, nothing on Earth is identical. Two ten cents, two twin brothers, are not identical. They exclude because of their quantified matter. Otherwise, everything would be the same. Huh? We are different not because of the matter, because of the quantified matter. That means that matter is determined by a quantity, by a volume. By matter in itself is independent to measure. Plank of wood can be measured in one foot square or two. No. Uh, the, uh, but I put a measure in that. Huh? So that means I put a quantify, quantity in the matter. We call that in philosophy the principle of individuation. I don't have time to explain that now. But, you know, we are, by matter, we are, you know, matter is, is not determined. By definition, matter is absence of determination. And the form is determining. But to determine the matter, what is that? It is the quantity. The quantity delimits the matter. For example, the wood here is delimited by the surface, huh? by its limit. It's not the wood infinitely, no? It's the wood here. Not that wood, this wood, okay? Now I continue. <laughs> the, the many uh, <laughs> we we can see quantity, kinds of quantity. So this extension uh, is continuous or discrete. Continuous, for example, continuity, uh, continuous. This uh, the surface here is continuous. Uh, the end of one is the beginning of the other. But if I use a, 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 a saw, I can divide. The, the board and gave you a pack to you, another, another, that we call that discrete. Huh? Your mother, when she prepared a, a, a cake, huh? all the cake was continuous hmm? <laughs> quantity. But she cut the cake in part, and now each part, every part is discrete, huh? is not continuous. Okay? Separated, huh? separated. And I go in the square after that. Huh? After cutting the cake, etc., 
uh, okay. Quantity is as no contrary. That means quantity, five is five. For example, coal is opposed to hot, no? Five cannot oppose to nothing. It is that or nothing. <laughs> it is five or nothing. It's the reason why in mathematics, when you were in the first grade and the teacher asked you five plus three and you write nine, she said zero. <laughs> F. <laughs> why? Because it is that or not. Huh? Okay? There is no contrary. But, uh, but there is some, uh, yes, we cannot see a, a little bit of, you know, five plus three, it is a little bit more than eight, a little bit less than eight. No, it is eight. <laughs> no? <laughs> it is eight, yeah. Okay? Uh, so it is equal or unequal. And we see that soon in relation. Huh? So each material being has a precise quantity at a precise time. In fact, we are in time and space. In space, huh? volume, and in time. And in time, it's the same. <laughs> you know, uh, we are not no more or no less present. The present is present. And when I say present, is already the past. <laughs> precise quantity and precise time. Yeah, yeah, precise time. Because the time is constantly moving, no? When you say it is 10, it's no more 10. It is 10, but just one second. <laughs> and when you say it is 10, 15, it is already more than that. That means uh, a time is time, precise. Huh? Okay. Uh, we cannot be at two time at the same time. We cannot be at two places at the same time. Okay. The quality now. Well, the quality is also intrinsic, huh? intrinsic to uh, to the the, 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 uh, the substance. Huh? So, what is the quality? Well, you have that on your uh, text here. Um, it is that accident by which I think is a cer certain sort of kind, huh? such and such. For example, my dog is black. Now he's such and such. He's black. He's not white. He's not brown. He's black. That's the quality. The water is warm or is hot. It's hot. It's such. Okay? That's the quality. Qualis huh? in Latin. Huh? What kind? Huh? Qualis. What kind? Huh? Okay? The, the word qualis, what kind, means the adjective quality. Huh? The quality. Okay? So we have two kinds of quality. The quality indicating how a thing is and how a thing acts. So the, the, the being, if you want, and the activity of a thing. Huh? In fact, in every living being, we have two aspects. And the, uh, the aspect of existence and the aspect of activity. Okay? So um, <laughs> here we have a, a word to say about um, the word powers. We speak about powers. We can use also the word faculties. The word capacities. The word potentialities, etc. Many words to describe to say the same thing. And St. Thomas used another word, the parts of the soul. Well, when he says that, he does not divide the soul in, in parts. But when you speak about the parts of the soul, you speak about the powers of the soul. For example, what are the powers of the human soul? Intellect and will, huh? the intellect and our will. And we have other powers. We have sense power, external, internal. Huh? We have locomotive power, many, many, many powers, huh? many powers, okay? So that, uh, here, I go to Miriam Webster. The first, it is ability power, huh? innate or acquired ability to do something. Huh? And inherent capability, power of doing something, that is our senses. Huh? And the power of the mind, the will, the intellect. So you know that we speak about powers, we speak about faculties, capacities, huh? potentialities, many words to s express the same reality. Okay? 
Um, now I go to just after that. Quality is the accident used to describe a thing. Description. So how we can describe a thing? We can describe a thing through what it is, what is appearances, huh? and what is activities. I can describe a cat through his appearances. Huh? He, is, uh, he is a four-leg animal. Huh? He has teeth, etc. Appearances. He is black. He is uh, etc. The form, uh, the shape, the size, and also I can describe him through his activity. Huh? He is uh, he is a uh, run. He is a good mouse hunter. Huh? He likes to eat meat. He does not like to eat. Uh, he have gave carrots. He don't like carrots. He like meat. You know. He is a carnivore. So I describe him, my dog. I say him because for the Muslim of American. Uh, a, a cat and a dog are a member of the family, like Latin. Huh? Latin, we study Latin. Huh? Canis and cat, all those animals are like the same, they obey the same law as the human person in grammar. They are considered as human. Human society. So, <laughs> so they, uh, they will describe our, our animal, our, uh, our, uh, through their color, to their appearance, to their shy and to their different activities. Take any definition. And that why we study that now. It is to define. Huh? We define through the quantity. We define through the quality. You define through what is a thing, appearances, qualities, and the activities of a thing. And that here is then what we study just after action and passion. Because when my dog is running after a mouse, it's an action. And my, the mouse is <laughs> is uh, eaten by my da by my cat. That that is a uh, passion. Hmm? <laughs> okay, I continue. I go. Huh? The characteristic flow from the substance and form. Man is described by his intellect and rationality, which is the faculty of soul, the form of man. In fact, we know man what true is intellect, intelligent activity. How I can know man? Because men can laugh, can smile, you know. I know man through his activity. I know man is living as long as he is active, spontaneous activity, you know. Okay? And from external qualifying form, huh? that means the appearances, what falls on my senses. I see a person, a human person, I can describe the form, the color, huh? The, the dimension, the member he has, etc. Okay? In fact, when you study man, you study biology, you can define man by, by biology, you can define man even in mathematics, the volume <laughs> and the dimension. And when you say you have six feet high, well, that is mathematics, huh? measure. Okay? Um, so, in brief, the qualities, huh? the qualities yeah, are the external suchness of the form. In fact, we know the form of someone through his qualities. How I can know man is intelligent through his qualities, the name through his, uh, the quality of his action. I know my dog or my cat uh, through their activities. Uh, I know a horse through his activity. Uh, I know uh, an ox through his activity. You know? okay. I will not ask my dog to uproot a, a tree. But I can ask an ox to uproot a tree. He can. An elephant can do that, not my cat. But I will not ask an elephant uh, to run after a mouse, hmm? because your kitchen will be destroyed soon. So quality is linked with the form. Huh? In fact, we know the substance from the accident. We know the substance from quantity and from quality. If there is no quantity, I cannot see you. If there is no quality, I cannot see. And quality exists in quantity. If there is no matter, there is no quality. So the foundation first is quantify matter. Huh? Quantify matter. And quantify matter is known through qualities. Huh? Through the smelling, to touching, uh, through color, huh? through activities, etc. Okay? In fact, never you will know a su the substance of a being. We know being on it only through our 
senses. So I know your eye. How you can know me? How you can know my eye? Because I have a quantity. Because, uh, because I have some quality of color. Uh, because I have some activity. The day I will be in my, uh, in my tomb, that he will say, Father Logo is no more a teacher. He's no more Father Logo. Huh? Yeah, the quantity is, is demolished and disappearing. Huh? We know everyone, sometimes we forget that. We, we know people through the appearances, through what we see through our senses. Is the reason why the eye of each one is forever a mystery to other. Never a person can know exactly who we are, even I can know exactly who am I. I know that am I. I don't know perfectly my eye. I remember that uh, 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 Aris, um, Socrates, huh? he said, know yourself. And we never finish to know yourself, is the reason why uh, Saint Ignatius of Loyola invite us to make examination of conscience regularly to know us better. And sometimes we discover qualities we never think about that. Uh, through some even, some even, sometimes we allow you to know yourself. To say, hey, I can do that. Ah, uh, yes, you know yourself. Suppose somebody asks you to sing in public. I never sing in public, I cannot. Yes. And you sing and oh wonderful. Hey, you discover a new aspect of your high. No? <laughs> we never finish to discover. And and the other the same. We never finish to discover who are others. And we do other through their qualities, to their quantities, etc. A baby, we know the baby. Uh, you see a baby and five years after you come back from Africa or from the Vietnam and you see the baby is no more baby, he is I, huh? You know, he grows through quantity. It's because the quantity, the quantified matter of his eye grew. And the quality is, he was not able to talk, no, he speaks very well. Huh? Okay, so that, that, we know that is important. How we can know others? Only through that. And another way to know it is through a relation. Huh? That means relations are partly intrinsic and partly extrinsic. Oh, before, I forgot something important. Page 11, excuse me, I forgot. Uh, uh, I mean, acts, but we act through habits or disposition. Now, habit, we see that in the future, it is the acquired operational structure. No? Acquire. We acquire, Father's I write with it, no? operational, to operate, operational structure. We are structured to do something, but we have to acquire. For example, you acquire the structure of using a computer. You acquire the structure of using a guitar. You acquire the structure of talking Spanish or English or Vietnamese. You, know? you acquire good habit of practicing justice, virtue of justice, virtue of prudence. They are structuring. Huh? When I will teach that in, in a few, few weeks, we, we can have a uh, a truck, uh, a big truck or a big uh, engine, even. And if it is winter, if we want to, that engine uh, put the, uh, um, the snow on out and clean the snow from snow, what we have to put to the, we have to put a plot. Uh, so we put a plot, but it is not in the structure of the, of the truck. But we add, huh? the truck acquire an operational structure. So now the truck can flow, plow, the, the snow, the snow, you know? We put, so we do that with tractors, we do that with, your car has not uh, the, the power, the structure to, to haul a van, a little van. But if you put huh, a device, at the, at the, you can haul. So you have to structure your car, you go, you have bicycles, see that's some, of a car, and they have bicycle behind that car. But to all bicycle, you must add a structure, you know, add it to your car. So a habit is that. That is a quality. Huh? 
And that makes you personality. The personality is made with that. Yeah. Well, okay. Ability or inability, uh, uh, they are innate. Huh? So uh, we have, for example, uh, the power of, uh, we have ab uh, some ability, they are innate. For example, the ability of, uh, of uh, eating, the ability of seeing. Huh? All those abilities are in, innate. But someone, they, are not, uh, they don't have those abilities. For example, they are born blind. They cannot see, they cannot hear. Huh? You remember Helen Keller, huh? American worker, Helen Keller. Beautiful movie, beautiful life, extraordinary life. Huh? Helen Keller. She only smelled and touched. And she went to university. Hmm? And she was a, became a teacher. <laughs> and that is a marvel. Huh? But huh? now, the, the, here's huh? the thing is through my sense qualities, color, I touch, huh? and also through form or figure. The form here is not the form of the desk, huh? it's the, the form, the shape. Huh? So the word form is ambiguous, huh? it's equivocal. Huh? equivocal huh? So the shape or the, the, the size, huh? the dimension, huh? uh, the, the, it is square or it is uh, round. Huh? You have that on page 12. Huh? Form, the form is natural and the shape is artificial. Uh, the, no, excuse me, the figure is artificial. Huh? Curve, triangle, etc. And note that some qualities have contraries. For example, the uh, black and white, I can have gray. Between black and white, I have all the degree of black, all the degree of white, you know, that contrary. Okay. Now, a relation. <laughs> we know that qualities and quantities are intrinsic to the substance. I cannot have material substance without having quantity and quality. Now, if I look at any material reality, I, dis I will distinguish something which is intrinsic to that reality and something which is extrinsic. Anyway, if you have, for example, a dog, a cat, a, a tree, huh? If a material thing like a desk, there is a relation to the maker, no? There is a relation to the father, to the mother, huh? There is a relation to God, to other. So that relation is partly intrinsic to the material reality. Huh? In fact, material reality implies at least a relation of causality. Huh? That means if the desk is here, it must be a cause. If you are here, there must be a cause, huh? okay? And so uh, we are in relation. Anyway, we are in relation with uh, our environment. Even we are alone on the on an island like Robinson Crusoe, huh? with Friday, <laughs> huh? uh, we, we are not alone. We are with birds, we are with mosquitoes, huh? we are with crickets, we are with, uh, with uh, mouse, we are with uh, We are not alone. We are with rain and sun. In fact, we are in relation with our environment. I would say it is intrinsic in every material being to have, a rel to have many relations. Huh? Nothing can exist materially without having some relations. Okay? So a relation is a part between, a link, huh? is a link between two, uh, the inner reality, between the reality and another reality, outside of that reality. So we can say uh, it is partly intrinsic, and the example is easy to understand. Your father and his son or his daughter. Huh? So fatherhood, huh? fatherhood, it is a relation. Huh? Fatherhood is properly where? Intrinsic. In the father, it is intrinsic to the father. But there is no father if there is no son. So when uh, uh, a man and a woman create a family, huh, they are not father and mother. And sometimes they, they will never be father and mother if they have no child. They are married, but they are not father. So what makes a, fa a man a father? What makes a woman a mother? It is the fatherhood or the maternity. 
the fact they had a son. So the relation is properly in the father, uh, but it is intrinsically in the father, but extrinsically in the son. So in relation, there is always something intrinsic, something extrinsic. Okay? Uh, if we speak about filiation, sonship, uh, filiation, where is filiation? It is in the son, intrinsically in the son, but extrinsically in the father and in the mother. Okay? So you can say for everything, uh, a relation of causality. It is in the cause, but it is also in the thing caused. <laughs> I mean, you know, the relation uh, between the Mona Lisa and Leonardo da Vinci, but the relation, uh, if I speak about the creation, it is in the mind and in the heart of uh, Leonardo, but it is in the painting. Huh? So we can see it. that artist is very genius because we see the painting. Okay? So there is always uh, a part of intrinsic, I would say, uh, 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 intrinsic reality and extrinsic reality in every, um, in every relation. No? So it is a bearing of reference of a thing toward another thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> so in fact, uh, what is about the thing that causes to be related as the foundation? How the son is related, how the father is related, is, is, can have the fatherhood, the, the foundation of the relation between the father and the son. The filiation is the relation. The, if there is no son, there is no father. If there is no father, there is no son. Interesting. Apply that to the Holy Trinity. Now, you will study, you will study, if you study theology, we study God one and triune. Huh? And in one and triune, you speak about the Father and the Son. Well, I don't want to enter that. But you know, the concept of relation is necessary to study theology. What you're studying now, you are preparing for the theology. The concept of relation. When you study God, philosophy of God, a large part of philosophy of God is religion, based on religion. Religion of causality. Huh? Religion of participation. When God said, uh, I, I, uh, the Bible said, God made, God, to his, man made, God made man to his image and resemblance. What is resemblance? It's a religion. Resemblance means a religion. That means intrinsically, huh? being is in essentially in God, existence exists in God, by, and existence is in them, but by another, you know, both have existence, I am, I have the image of God because I exist, but existence is in, I exist, by, he exists by himself, I exist by another, but we, there is a relation, something common. It's very, very important that that category is excessively important in theology, even in, in, in society. <laughs> society is based on relation, no? Family is based on relation, okay. I go now to two other, uh, at, um, two, two forms of relation, page uh, 13. We have a relation based on quantity, and relation based on action and passion, we study just after. Well, relation and quantity. In fact, relation based on number. What is the unique number, I would say, <laughs> in, in mathematics? What is the unique reality in mathematics? One. <laughs> if you say five, what is five? It is five times. One. That means every number is related to the unity. Of course, you put your, your teacher at the second grade did not say that. <laughs> but you, you say seven, seven is related, seven gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, <coughs> that means seven times one gift. 
That means that the, there is a unity. When you have multiplicity, it is the multiplicity of the one. Of course, in mathematics, we don't see. Uh, what is my chart? Oh, I have one chart. Mm. <laughs> if you say seven, seven equal seven multiplied by one. But we never should. It is understood. But it is fundamental. The fundamental in mathematics is the number. All the rest is a relation to. <laughs> Not to zero, to one. You see, 200 is 201. <laughs> 200 times one. If you say minus one, it is the absence of one. If you see minus two, is the absence of two, five, two, two times one. <laughs> of course, we, we don't say that, but it, it is there. Huh? It is the reality. Okay? So we can also compare huh? equal or inequal, huh? similar. So when you have some exercises by with Sister Spengler, you have some question of that, huh? about equal, larger, smaller. If you say, I am a, a bigger than I was uh, two, two years ago, and my pumpkin grows, <laughs> <coughs> okay, I become larger, I am larger, oh, I am more learned. Huh? I quantify my knowledge. <laughs> huh? uh, but it, it is by comparison. What is a comparison? It is a relation. What is an analogy? It is a relation. Relation is omnipresent. We know through comparison, that means every time we know something, we use a relation to the object we know. What is knowledge? We said that it is a intentional union, yeah? intentional union with the subject and the object through the act. We saw that, huh? That means it is a relation. And what makes the relation between the object, the color, and your eyes? It is the act of seeing. It is a relation. In fact, we cannot live without a relation. I would say we are partially, essentially, a being of relation. The fact we exist in the world, we are in relation with the sun, with the air. Huh? Nobody can say I am absolutely independent. My eye exists on oh, no. Only God can say that. <laughs> and we are dependent, we are in relation with the air, with the sun, with the moon, with water, with nature, with others. Huh? That's it. Okay? Now relation based on action and passion. Past, present and future. A relation based on action. For example, father, huh? son, master, slave, chairman, member, huh? employer, employee, or boss, employee, leader, etc. Huh? Builder, maker, huh? and maid. In fact, in English, when you have a word ended by er, huh? it many times means a relation between. It is the one which makes a relation between two things. Huh? Okay? Um, so, um, so when we speak about religion, huh, we speak always about action and passion. My father engendered me, so he is active, and I have that. I receive existence from my father and my mother. You know, so they are agent. I am the patient. Patient that means to suffer it. No, patient is to be acted by another, huh? to be made by another, to be moved by another. The more passion is not only lust, huh? it's not only drinking, it's not only uh, <laughs> uh, drugs, I think. Huh? Passion here is another meaning, you know, another meaning. Huh? Passion is not to be good. Now, relation, very important, I have time for that, and very happy because it is something important for your. Can add, I add that with transcendental. Make a link with that, okay? Transcend, transcendental relation. And we have real relation and make a link with logical relation. Okay? So that one opposes this one and this one opposes that one. Okay? So let's predicamental. That relation it is what we are studying now, huh? Categ category. 
and the relation father in my father. My, the relation of sonship, filiation in me. I am forever the son of Antonio Lego. I am forever the son of Yvette Berthio. Now that is a religion, okay? You are forever the son of your father and your mother. You cannot destroy that, it's forever, huh? okay? That, but it is contingent. That means it is accidental that I am the son of Antonio Lugo. Why I could be the son of another man? No. I can't be born. Think about that. Our birth, someone are born in a rich family, but they can, they could be born in a poor family. Someone are born in a Islamic family, other born in a Catholic family. Contingents. Is not essential in your being to be a Catholic or a Muslim, or to be rich or to be poor. Okay, so it is a, a, a relationship that be present or absent from the essence. We cannot say that my essence is to be the son of Antonio Lugo. I cannot say that. I cannot say that. But I, I, but it's a fact, huh? and a fact is not necessary. Is contained. It's continent. Okay? This is the Aristotelian category of relation. Father root, the relation, and then second the father. Huh? Filiation. Okay. Now relation between two entities here is this essential. That means the being cannot exist without that relation. Hmm? And removal of the relation will imply the change of the essence or the destruction of the thing. For example, my relation between God, me, God and me, God and man. My relation with God is a transcendental relation. I cannot exist without God. It is essential. It is necessary. But the relation between God and man is, not, is purely accidental. Okay? You understand that? Hmm? Can you repeat that? The relation <laughs> between man and God is necessary, is absolutely uh, essential to me. I cannot exist without God. Okay? But it's accidental. It's not accidental. Oh, it's not okay. accidental. No, oh, because okay. That's what I, you said. I can say, I can say, man is a rational animal. Huh? caused by another. I cannot say God, a man is a rational animal existing by himself. We studied that in the philosophy of God. Huh? The big difference, essential difference, essential difference between God and man is that God exists by himself and he exists by another. Not in another, by another. We relation, are contingent and he is necessary. But the relation is accidental, correct? The relation between God and us is accidental. God yeah. does not need us. Yeah, that's what he was saying. But our relation of man to God is essential, transcendent. I give you another example in metaphysics. When we study metaphysics, we study being. And we realize that every being, by the fact it is being, it is, it is, it is one, it is true, and it is good. That means it can be. It, it is the object of knowledge, of knowledge, at least the one who, who did that, is good because it, it is will and it is one, because to be two is not to be one being. One being is one. Okay? We call that in, in metaphysics the transcendentals, huh? the three transcendentals, unum, verum, and bonum, the one, the true, and the good. Huh? Well, okay, that they are transcendent. We, we, that means we cannot have good without being, and we cannot have being without good. Okay? That is metaphysical. In the case of God, we, can, uh, we cannot have men without God, but we can have God without men. Okay. So we, can, we cannot... Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> now I go to real and logical. A real, it is a reference, huh? Uh, to a, a real thing. That means a thing existing 
independently of my mind. That is the definition of real. Something real, it is something existing independently of my mind. For example, my cat is real. Okay? But the concept of cat I have of my cat is not real. It is in my mind. For example, the ten categories are in my mind. Ah, or second level before they were in the reality. Huh? So when a thing is in my mind, only in my mind, uh, exist, it has a, is a, is a logical a logical being. Uh, for example, this apple is sweet, and when you see this apple is the subject, when you see that, it is in your mind. Because the reality is an apple. <laughs> uh, the apple is an apple. But you see the apple is a subject of to be, that is in your mind. Second level of intention. Uh, abstraction. Uh, if it, uh, any abstraction is in your mind. The reality is the cat. The concept cat, that is in your mind. The concept is in your mind, the reality outside. And if you know the problem of universal is there. Huh? Is the reality and the concept one or different? Well, I don't have time to explain that here. Okay. We we'll see that in, uh, in, in the history of philosophy. Okay. So that is logical. Real, it is a existed independently of my mind. And logical exists independent of my mind. <laughs> huh? Okay? For example, you have three cases, three cases of relation, a logical relation. Look at that. The first, huh, um, the two terms are not real. The two terms huh, are not real. For example, the predicable. Huh? John is a good golfer. A good golfer is attributed to John in an accidental way. Accidental. That accident exists only in my mind. Not the fact it's a golfer, but the, when I say it's the attribute of the subject. A, 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 an apple is sweet, this apple is sweet, sweet attribute of the subject that is not real at all. Of course, it is founded on the reality, but in my mind is uh, the concept of sweetness, the concept of uh, catness, <laughs> of darkness, <coughs> the concept exists in my mind. But with, with, fundament, with a fundamental foundation on the reality, but the extent is here. Not the reality this time. For example, the attribute of God. God is just. God is merciful. God is powerful. When you study that in philosophy uh, of God, we will see that the distinction is only logical. There is no real distinction in God between his justice and his mercy and his power and his eternity. All that is one. In fact, only thing God exists. I am. There you go. But we should do that. Finally, are related from non-objective reason. The foundation is not real. No. I come back to that example here. God and man. The relation between God and man. Does God need man? No. No, no he can be taught without man. So the, the relation between God and man is a logical relation. It is only in my mind. But the relation between man and God is a real relation exist independently of my mind. Okay? And now I go faster because we have a few minutes. Action and passion. So uh, the mover and the move. Hmm? And action and passion, they are correlative. So we have, uh, we have the two kinds of uh, action. And I think I have to explain that in a few minutes. We have transitive or transient action and we have immanent action, activity. Transient, transitive, or transient, or transitive, and immanent. Well, transitive huh, express a kind of operation whose result is outside of the subject. For example, you kick a ball, that is a transitive action. I talk is a transitive action. Okay? But if you eat, if you study, if you listen, the action is not only transitive, it is immanent. Because 
the operation, the result of the operation stays in you, remains in you. To think is an immanent operation. The result stays in you. I digest is an immanent operation. You know? Okay? So uh, I go now to page uh, 16. So they have a transitive verb express, a transitive verb. Yeah? In English, transitive verb express a transient operation. Intransitive verb, intransitive verb can express immanent operation. For example, John thinks, huh? uh, this plant grows, huh? the apple runs fast. All that the result is in you. When you run, the result of your running <laughs> is in you, stay in you, in manner. Who will come on that? Huh? So a remark. Huh? Transient operation involves something else, involves an agent. That means if the ball is kicked, there must be an agent. So we have action, passion, and relation. Huh? You know, action, passion, they are relation also. That means there is, if there is action, riding a horse is ridden, I must have a writer, you know. Commanding is commanding a commander. Baking, baked, baker. <laughs> huh? <coughs> baker imply a thing which is huh? baking, is baking, and the thing is baked. Huh? Bake. And the baker. Huh? You have a singing song, singer. Taught, think, uh, teaching. Teach. Teach. Teacher. Teacher. No. Mastering. Master. Master. Mm -hmm. huh? Okay. Uh, now extrinsic. Totally extrinsic. Now you have in, in regard to quality. Huh? Where? The place. Position. The situation of member. In, uh, kneeling. Standings. Etc. And the time. Huh? They are external. Uh, external. Uh. And finally possession. The possession it is to have something, but not far, but close to the body, close to the matter huh, of your body. For example, your clothes. Huh? So it is an accident proper to a body. We speak about that only for human being. And I told you last class that Aristotle did not speak about that. Huh? It was added by philosophers in the Middle Ages. Huh? So possession includes all external equipment added. Huh? A gun, for example, or a policeman. Huh? the clothes and the cassock, all that. Huh? So possession flows from our intellect power. Why we add, why the philosopher in the Middle Age added that two uh, categories being? Because it is very linked with our capacity of thinking. If we are clothes, if we are gone, because we are intelligent. Huh? Okay? By analogy, we can say also that the cat has a beautiful fur. <laughs> We can say that. Huh? And we can say also by analogy, no, uh, uh, not for a car, for a thing. Uh, my car uh, is very uh, fast. We can, by analogy, we can give a substance to a car. But in fact, a car is not a substance. Huh? But by analogy, by comparison. Now, a summary that's of that. Uh, you have five points. Huh? First, only simple reality can be placed on, on one reality at a time. Huh? One reality. Secondly, must be a whole, uh, a whole, the, the, the substance, but also we remember the part of the substance that the living being are considered as substance. Huh? I can say my arm is, uh, is, uh, is tired. <laughs> huh? Third, uh, must be natural. An artificial thing normally is not uh, considered as a substance, but by accident, we, uh, we use, by, excuse me, by analogy, we attribute a qualities, quantities, measure to a car. Huh? It is my, the, my father's car. We put a relation between the car and your father. Uh, four, it is a, you must be a univocal word, of course. Huh? One, only one meaning. And finally, universal nature. Huh? So the categories are the ultimate kinds of predicate. They are the universal division of being. And nothing is above them. Therefore, strictly speaking, we cannot define the, the ten ultima genera, the ultimate genera, because they are the top. We, we, we try to, to give a, 
a description, but strictly speaking, there is nothing above that. <laughs> Everything is being or mode of being. And before being, above being, there is nothing. Because if there was something be, uh, uh, be, uh, above being, it will be being. <laughs> no? <laughs> so there is nothing above being in the uh, division. So the division of being is the ultimate boxes. The ten ultimate boxes in which we can put everything, every material reality. And finally, a word about opposition of categories. No? A word very simple. Contrary opposition and contradictory opposition. Contrary means there is possibility of a middle. Huh? A middle between hot, we call that contrary. Contradictory ex expressed Total exclusion, contradictory. Total exclusion, contradictory, opposite. And the way to say that it is to say hot and non-hot, cold and non-cold. That is contradictory. There is no middle. It is that or that, huh? one or zero huh? in in uh, in electronic, one or zero. It is on, it is out. We, there is no half. Uh, the, the electricity is no half on the line. It is on the line or not on the line. <laughs> and that is contradictory. And that is important historically, for example, because Marx, Hegel, used the word contradiction, but in fact, strictly speaking, is it, they should use the word contra, contrariety and not contradiction. Because contradiction implies not a single a common ground between the two terms. But when they speak about the rich and the poor, it's not contradictory. It is contrary. And they play on that to say there is a contradiction. No, it's not a contradiction. The rich does not contradict the poor. They are contrary to the poor. And the proof of that between the poor and the rich, they are the middle class. <laughs> Or oh, there was a middle class. Okay, now there is no contradiction to go to to eat something because it is conform to your nature. So add a good appetite. And don't forget to make the, the to do the exercises, huh? I cannot do that for you. Huh? Okay? So next time is the day predicable. Huh? Sister, oh la la, you spoil me. Mm. Mm. I will not, I will use that to smell. <laughs> Thank you. We should use that at the mask for washing hands. <laughs> Oh, yes. oh, I brother, I have to give you the second lecture of Compendium. Yeah. Can we do that after the meeting? Yes. Can you come to my office? I will do that. Yes. Okay. Come to your office or your room? Come with me to my office. Uh, your room? Yes. yes. If you are in uh, Rio, I can drive you after. Because if we wait, I will forget. Yes. And you have my uh, little uh, chip? Yes, I have. Stop right. Yes. Close. Yes. No, I need. They close the lens also. Does this go on top of me or the. Uh, yes, it will be. Oh, well, Ask it a specialist.